Sometimes practice on turf fields. Next time, see if you can practice on a dirt field. Because there's a difference between fielding on turf and then fielding on real dirt and on grass. So if you can mix that up a little bit, I think that's really important because turf hops are way different than high grass or all dirt fields, those kind of things. So I think that you getting the kids to where they're, they're feeling confident, um, you know, when they're fielding and when they're playing, the better it's gonna be. Just like Coach Steve said with the hitters, taking that practice swing into the game, it's about confidence, it's about knowing you're ready, it's about taking that swing that you've built and being able to just take it right into the game. Well, fielding is the same exact way. And you need to make sure that if you can get there a half hour or an hour early, get some ground balls on the actual field that you're gonna be using in the game. That way you are prepared, they're prepared, and you're kind of just getting them mentally as ready as possible because sometimes when they're not mentally ready or like, oh my gosh, we're playing on a, on a dirt field today, what do we do? Now all of a sudden they're sitting back on their heels, they're letting the ball bounce more, you know, but, uh, but I think that practicing on as many different types of playing surfaces as possible is going to help get them as, you know, as confident as, as they can be. Yeah, and the other piece I was going to add in was us as coaches setting the tone early. And uh, Coach, Coach Morrow has a question about any tips on pregame talks to get 10U kids, girls and boys, focused and ready to go. And I think it ties in with the first question that we just had on us making sure that you know, we get there, we set the tone, we have a practice plan, our assistant coaches know exactly what their jobs are for practice, you know, we utilize the whole field, we break them up into small groups, all the things that we talk about for our, for our perfect practice routine, but making sure that we're prepared as coaches. So when we get there, we've got a job to do. I know what I'm doing, Coach Duke knows what he's doing, Coach TJ knows what he's doing, and we roll into practice like that. We have four groups of four, or three groups of four, that's our 12 kids, we break up, we keep them moving. I think uh, you start to see a lax in the focus and the effort when there's some standing around. But when you have a group of you know, 10, 11, 12 year olds, they get there and they ha they, they're moving, they have a, a specific job to do, they have a task to do, and you know, we try to create competitions out of everything, that sets the tone right there. We don't give them an opportunity to, to be lazy or, right. or lackadaisical and hang around because they get there, we go through our warm-up, we have our, our pre-game or, or pre-practice talk, and here we go, we're rolling into it. We've got 90 minutes, let's, let's make the most of it. So you know, I think it starts with our energy, our, our being prepared and making sure that the practice plan is written, it's drawn out, our assistant coaches know what they're doing, and we roll right in. And uh, you know, there's no standing around, there's no wasted time.